into a little bit on my 50 today. Um, today in particular, I'm going to talk about the pins and one of the downsides to the SHTF 50. Now, what you have before you here is the pack which I got to transport my 50 in. And the nice thing about this pack is, along with carrying it like a normal gun case, you can carry it like a battle pack. It's got, uh, it basically goes on like a backpack. However, what I did was I got one, as I spec the length of the pack, to be only as long as the barrel and chamber. This is going to allow me to carry a, sm you know, a smaller package, but I have to disassemble the gun every time I want to put it in. So I decided to go with getting the quick uh, pull pins that are common on AR-15s. However, these pins will not work in this gun using a, uh, the gun's dedicated lower. They'll work just fine if you have an AR lower that you're putting the upper on, but they will not work in a dedicated lower without modifying them. And right after I got done modifying them, I was like, man, I should have made a video on modifying them. However, the thing was... I uh, even at the time uh, I didn't really didn't wasn't sure what I was doing. I was kind of going by uh, going by feel there, and after it worked, I was like, "Oh, great!" But I'm gonna pull it out and explain to you what it was I had to do to make the pins work. So first, let me open up my pack here, and this is just about as heavy as you would imagine it would be. Here you can see, I think, that there's the upper sitting ever so nicely in one section. On the other side of the pad, I have the lower. And I have them set up to be somewhat balanced in here. Okay. Now this here, this here is the lower to the SHTF-50. You can see it looks very similar to an AR's lower. The main difference being there is no magwell right up here and the rifle itself is physically thinner here because it doesn't need all the extra mechanisms that you would have for a normal AR such as a magazine going in there and that's where we run into the problem and the problem is the holes right here and this is still a little loose I haven't tightened it yet right here there's a recess for that pin to go into let me see if I can get this to show up on the camera nicely you see that recess right there? And the next one is right over in here. Now to make these pins work, the first thing I had to do was again, was I had to uh, shave off here where it's silver, which I'm going to be blowing that later. But basically I just took a grinding wheel and just took off a little bit of metal, a little bit of extra right here to fit in against this little ridge here and then this one similarly I had to go all the way around the camera's having trouble focusing I had to go all the way around as well so now when they're pushed in they both seat all the way in and I only notice this here this is the next mod I had to make this here is recessed just a little bit but not too much and the reason that that's recessed like that is these ears here, eh, stay in the, in the camera, there we go, the ear here is a little bit thinner than a normal AR. So when you pull this pin out, the pin stuck out to about here. So in order, you couldn't take the lower on or off. So in order to put the lower on, I marked the pin to be flush there and then I used a Dremel with a cutting disc and lopped off the majority of the pin. Then because I wanted a very precise um, fit there because I wanted it to be as close to flush as possible because the, the closer to flush I have on here the further in to this side it goes and the more metal I have locking together. So then I took a grinder and very carefully in very small layers took off putting this in and what you can do I'm going to show you here the, the hole 
for where the caging pin goes into lines up with a hole on here. And that tells you how far out this pin is going to sit when you uh, have it in retracted position when it's in the caged out position. Well, what I did was I had the pin out because if you put the if you put put it back into being caged, it is a nightmare taking this in and out again. So I left the pin out, I left the spring out, and then I would just simply slide this in until the hole was all the way in. And to make sure I had a little bit extra to make sure it was no matter what it was going to be flush and not sticking out a little bit, I pushed it to the far edge of here, so where the bottom where the where the inner edge of the pin's hole lined up with the inner edge of the hole on here because the pin's hole is a little bit smaller. And this keeps moving. I, I keep forgetting that the lens is on one side of this. Anyway, back to what I was saying. And that way I didn't have to keep you know pinning it and pulling it back out every time I wanted to uh, grind off a little more. So after I ground that off, I then re-caged the pin. I, re I reinstalled the pin into it. I reinstalled the spring into it. Well the spring and then the pin and then this pin. This one on this side was a lot was a, a lot less work required. Pull that back out. Maybe pull that back out. I'll get that in a minute. Anyway, this one was a lot less work to modify because it only needed that ridge ground down. Now I'm gonna pull out because it's bugging me. There we go. These have to be a little bit more jerky with it. So what the reason for this whole setup here is, like I said earlier, the, part, the the idea was to be able to carry the gun in two pieces, and then you assemble it as one piece when you're ready to go fire it, and then you take it back down apart again. The problem was, it's a pain taking you know, getting tools out to do that. So real quick, I'm going to just demonstrate you know putting this gun together and taking it apart. So. The first step is take your lower out. You know, let me angle this up and I'm going to pull you guys away so you can see what I'm done. The next stage is you pull out your upper. And I found with the SHTF 50, it's easiest to assemble if you pull your bipod. You let it sit down like such. Then, you check to make sure it's still on the camera. Line it up. You fight with it a little bit to get if you want to go in. It does not want to. Once it's snapped in place, just like an AR, pop your pins forward. And one thing which you can't see there, I'm going to tilt this a little bit. The bolt here I had sitting down to lock it in place. And that way the bolt and all this grease doesn't get onto the rest of this mat here. However, that gets in the way of hitting this in. So I just pop that bolt up and then slam the bolt, the, uh, the pin down. And now you're together. And now you're done shooting for the day. You're ready to take it apart. Pull it back, which actually... I'm going to do it the way I go, which is with it still on the bipod such, like such. Pull your pin. Support in the center, giving upward force. That'll help relieve some of the pressure on that rear pin. And come on. There we go. Pull the rear pin out. Hold up your bipod. Swing the gun around. And then for this pack, what I do, I'm gonna leave my lens cover on, is I leave the bolt locked down, like here, and I lay it on this side. This way the bolt will be held in, because it's a very loose bolt as far as that goes. Strap it down, flip it over, set the stock in, and you're basically good to go at this point. Now, 
The other issue, the other real downside with this gun, other than than the issue with, of the pins being somewhat difficult to take out, you know, adding the pull pins makes it a hell of a lot easier. The other issue is on this upper. Now, pull the gun back out. Okay. You may have noticed. All the white lithium grease all over this bolt. I mean the whole thing's just simply coated in white lithium grease. The interior is coated in white lithium grease. And you might be thinking to yourself, well my gun doesn't look like that. And the reason this is coated in white lithium grease is that is the only way this gun will bolt properly. Uh, I'm sure there's other greases that'll work as well. But when I first shot this rifle, I used Break free as my lubricant, which is what I use on all of my other guns, except for my other bolts. Um, however, what I found with this gun was if you used a gun oil, a thin gun oil like Break Free, every time you shot it, you had to get a hammer, beat the bolt, so you had to beat the bolt up like here with a hammer, and then beat the bolt back with a hammer. You had to like stand the gun upright in order to beat this bolt out. Or really having a magazine at all. And so I decided to try something that, you know, I've, I've done on a couple other bolt rifles, particularly my Moose, and it was a tough bolting rifle. So I coated the whole thing in white lithium grease. I have the, uh, there, there's some that going all the way down into the chamber. And what I later found out was that they make the chambers for this rifle very tight. So, the little bit of expansion that the uh, that the 50s round can get into there is enough to completely wedge it inside of here, makes you not want to be, makes it not want to unlock. So the uh, the grease, the heavier duty grease, makes this bolt work when the rifle is uh, after you've actually fired your rifle. There's not something you're gonna, you're going to really appreciate dry bolting it like here, or even bolting rounds through it. It's not until you actually pull the trigger and set a round off that it stops wanting to bolt and the grease basically makes it bolt just like a dream. So that's why the whole thing is covered in this thick white lithium grease. And a note to other people, you know, because that doesn't necessarily apply to anyone who doesn't have this particular rifle, but I have found that on some guns that have very stiff act acting bolts, such as a Mosin that's a very sloppy bolt and tends to have a like little ridges that like to catch on things, as well as my Winchester Model 70 that had a pitted bolt because it had been kept in an attic before I got it. I found that the uh, white lithium grease tended to fill in the pitting or fill in like any little burrs and made those bolts bolt uh, much nicer than what they bolted before. My, my Winchester bolts, you know, like a brand new Remington 700. So white lithium grease is one thing to consider. There is a downside. There's two downsides. One. This will get on everything. The ammunition that sits in the magazine closest to that bolt, that's going to have white lithium grease on, on the uh, shell casing. So now you can get on your hands and you mess with that bullet. The other thing is, it will attract more dirt than your traditional gun oil. So just beware, any little bit of dirt, grass, or anything is going to want to stick to the, uh, to the action of this gun. Or any gun that you treat with light, white lithium grease. So those are your downsides, but the upside of turning an action that was not usable into an action that works beautifully more than makes up for the downsides. If you like my content, like and subscribe. Leave me a comment in the comment section to let me to give me feedback on uh, on the work that I've done and give me ideas for future videos.